Jürgen Klinsmann, welcome to Wales, or welcome back to Wales, I should say. You've played here a few times as a player for Germany, but a big game or a, bit, a big week for South Korea. Two friendlies coming up. How are you and the team feeling going into this week? Yeah, we feel excited um, about that opportunity. Um, obviously, we have a bit of a different schedule compared to European nations. So we prepare already for the Asian Cup in January in Qatar. And uh, we also start already at the end of the year in December, in the December window, uh, with two World Cup qualifiers, uh, most likely against Singapore one game and in China the other game. And uh, um, I'm there since beginning of March with my coaching staff and it's been an adventure. <laughs> it's been an adventure and we're learning every day about a different approach, about different people, about a different culture, about different ways of looking at things. Um, it's fascinating. I really have to admit uh, um, the Korean culture is a very, um, yeah, fascinating culture. Um, very disciplined people, nice people, down to earth, very hard working. Um, and uh, it's in a stage with football where um, obviously the trend is to get your best players that you have in any nation around the world, get them into Europe and the best clubs as possible um, and uh, kind of build that as a um, yeah as a backbone of your team and uh, build the pieces around them and uh, I think we're doing better and better with that in Korea obviously we have Son at Tottenham and we have Kim Min Jae at uh, Bayern Munich now one of the best defenders in the world and we have a young kid uh, Gang Gangin Lee um, that is now has signed for Paris Saint-Germain and, uh, and other several players that are in the Premier League, they are in the Bundesliga. Uh, some are starters, some are not starters. Um, and this is kind of the, the, the path for the Korean players right now. Um, Japan is a step ahead of us. They placed far more players into Europe, far more starters in their clubs. Um, so it, that's the biggest rival for us. And, uh, and now we have the opportunity to be in Wales, be in Cardiff and play with Wales this uh, friendly game and prepare ourselves better and better hopefully to a successful Asian Cup that's our goal. Yeah tell us a bit about the squad that you've picked because you've got a blend of experienced players but you've got three players who have received their first senior international call-ups. Yeah we uh, obviously we looked at the roster that played the World Cup in Qatar they made it into the second round uh, in, a, in a difficult group with Uruguay with Portugal uh, they advanced because of a win against Portugal that they scored in the last second of the game but also because Portugal only played a second string and then they lost against Brazil right away in the round of 16. Uh, um, so the goal, the dream is to advance further in a big competition like a World Cup. You know, the goal maybe in a quarter in a semi-final one day because in 2002 when they hosted the World Cup, they were able to make their semi-finals uh, under Goose Hitting, the famous Dutch coach. And that's their dream. They want to go back there to that stage. Um, Obviously, we looked at the roster. We, in the first two friendly games, we respected that roster to give them a very, very nice reception back home in Korea. And then we started already dramatically to rejuvenate the roster. So in the last two friendlies that we played, we had a lot of young, young players in there. We had a look at them and we continued that path. Uh, we, we believe in the young talent coming through in Korea. They finished fourth in the Under-20 World Cup just recently, so it shows you there is a lot of talent mm -hmm. in Korea. So we start to kind of uh, throw them into the cold water. Uh, it might work well, it doesn't, but it will take time. Uh, but we want to see, okay, who, who of these youngsters are able already to play a, a role in Qatar for the Asian Cup? And obviously the bigger question is, who of those youngsters are maybe already important pieces mm -hmm. um, for the World Cup in 2026 in the United States, Canada and Mexico? So that's our kind of road we are starting now. And we start that road more or less now in Cardiff. We're excited about it against a very good Welsh team that we, I've seen them personally in the World Cup as well. Um, but uh, um, yeah, the result matters. Uh, we want to play well, we want to win the game if possible. Uh, but the bigger picture is to prepare them for the Asian Cup in Qatar in January. This will be your first time facing Wales as a coach. But as a player, you face them many times. Do you have any memories of playing against Wales, specifically here in Cardiff as well? Uh, memories always in a way that it's, it's been every game I played with Germany against Wales was very difficult. 
it was always a nail biter it was always down to the wire and and obviously for me personally the most traumatic one was in 1989 the last qualifying game for the world cup in italy where we had uh, uh, Wales and Cologne basically as, as our last opponent and uh, they almost kicked us out of the World Cup. <laughs> we just basically won 2-1, two, two, it was a nail biter and, and I remember the moment just two or three minutes before the end when Mark Hughes kind of had the ball over the crossbar which he, he should have actually, <laughs> we, which he should have put in and he knows it Mark and we just like we were totally under shock and it was the moment when the, the Berlin Wall came down. It was the moment of the German kind of reunification happening and we was kind of glued to the television screen as we play as we saw the wall coming down and now we have the decisive World Cup qualifier for Italy uh, just right there and we were like this I have half of my family lived in East Germany from my dad's side and half of my mom's side is in West Germany so I grew up in West Germany but you know we just were glued to the TV and then we had that World Cup qualifier and we thankfully you know won it but that was with Wales, so it will never forget. And then every game we had after that, I mean, obviously it's been always very competitive, and and uh, yeah, but it's been a good, it's been a good rivalry with Wales. There's a historic game in Welsh football. It wasn't a good night for Germany. I'm sorry, again, Wales winning one 0 that famous Ian Rush goal, and there's a famous picture, an iconic picture in Welsh football with Ian Rush wearing the Germany top, and it's your shirt because you did the shirt swap after the game. Yeah, but probably I was as proud as maybe he was. I mean, hope so because, I mean, Ian is a legend. Is a legend in world football, and especially for me as a centre forward. You know, looking at Ian Rush or Mark Hughes, you know, I admired these guys, and then so it was more than a pleasure for me to switch the jersey with him. Um, but uh, it was well deserved, the win by Wales, and and it showed always the competitiveness and and the strength of the, the, the Welsh national team and and so there is no easy game and and so it's the same today you know um, obviously there's no Gareth, Gareth Bale anymore you know after Mark Hughes, Ian Rush and all these big names came then the, the time for Gareth Bale to almost uh, take that team on, the, on his shoulders and I, I adored him uh, as a player his fantastic achievements he had and he stepped down now after the World Cup and um, and now it makes space for the next generation of, of big, big talent uh, that is coming through. One kid just signed for Spurs for 45 million pounds, which is crazy. <laughs> no, no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> no pressure on the kids today. I mean, the numbers are out of control now in the market and it's not the kid's fault. You know, it's, but it's, it shows that he has a lot of quality too. And, and now for us now, we continue our learning curve with the Korean team. Um, Wales does the same way towards the Euros in 2024, do their, playing their qualifiers, hopefully getting there, which is never, never easy. And so I hope we have a, a really good matchup, a good game and, uh, uh, and an exciting game for the fans. Yeah, what do you make of Wales' situation at the moment? Because you're out in Qatar as a pundit, also working with FIFA. Like you said, there's no Gareth Bale now. Do you have any sympathy for Rob Page, the manager, because he's dealing with a very large transition at the moment? Yeah, I have a lot of sympathy with, uh, with Rob. I mean, it's, uh, it's never easy when these moments come. And, and you as a national team coach, you are responsible to get that transition done. And, and uh, um, I remember my time with the American team, with the German team. I had two years of time to get them prepared for the World Cup 2006 and make a whole transition of players. I counted totally on youngsters. I went high risk at, the, at those times. You know, I brought in a, a Philipp Lahm, a Bastian Schweinsteiger, uh, Per Mertesacker, Lukas Podolski. They were all 19, 20, 21. And I said, I'm going to throw all my cards into, <laughs> into these kids. And, <laughs> and it, it worked out. It really worked out. And uh, I mean, they became big, big players and, and, uh, and made their country really proud. Uh, obviously, it took. It took 10 years from that beginning of that process to the moment they won the World Cup in 2014 under Joachim Löw then in Brazil. Uh, but uh, I think for us managers, like for Rob, um, it has also an excitement to bring in young, fresh players that really want to make their career, get them going and, 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 and give them a bigger picture. And uh, uh, 
it's never easy because it comes with some pain um, because uh, they will not be perfect, they will make mistakes, you will lose the one or the other game because they make those mistakes, but you got to do it because uh, uh, it's the future. So to find a mixture now between the established older players and the, the younger ones that want to steal their spots, that is the challenge of a national team manager especially. Um, it is uh, not easy, but it's also fascinating. I have to say for me, uh, I love that because I love to have talks with the, uh, the youngsters. I have the talks with the, like our established players is obviously uh, Sonny from Tottenham and is Kim and Jay from Bayern Munich, you know, so I tell them, you got to take them under your wings and you, you got to make them feel comfortable and they love to do that too. Um, in the Korean culture, it's very, very interesting for me to learn as a lot of uh, is based on age. So whoever is older, even if the players are, are two years old or three years old only, you've got to show him respect for the age. Mm -hmm. So a lot of communication happens on different age groups. So you see the youngsters being one group, the middle age groups is one, the older ones are one. And, and, uh, and, and there's a, a, a tone of, uh, um, uh, in their communication that shows always that type of respect. We don't really have that in a European culture. And so I had to learn why, uh, um, it's like Kim Min Jae represents the middle group, and he's he's won the Scudetto with Napoli, he won one voted best defender in Italy, but he didn't want to correct his older player, he's 31, 32, but even if he saw, oh, you're making a mistake, you got to move left or right, I said, why didn't you do that? And he said, I'm not allowed to, he's wow. he's the older player. And so you have to break those kind of uh, barriers and say, you know what, you are allowed to. <laughs> you played for Napoli and won the title in Italy, and now <laughs> you play for Bayern Munich. You know, got to show a bit more, <laughs> stuff like that. So uh, it's interesting uh, that way how these kind of uh, correspondence communication works between the youngers and the olders in, uh, in the national team. Finally, again, Thursday night, what kind of game are you expecting? And from a South Korean perspective, what would you like to get out of the game? Um, I want to see them uh, mature uh, with their personality. They can play really well football. You know, they know how to get, play the game. They're well educated, as I said. You know, the under 20 finished in the final four of the World Cup, um, and uh, and we have good leaders like Sonny and and like this uh, Kim In Jae. Um, but I, I want them to kind of show more personality as they you know even showed in the world cup i want them to become more confident because our goal is to go to qatar in january to win it it's not the final four or the final eight it's we're going to go there and and win it there are big nations now in in asia like you saw in the world cup you know saudi arabia beat in the first game argentina you know they have countries like iran they're very physical um you have you have uh, uh, Japan obviously is one of the best teams uh, and probably the number one right now with about 40, 50 players in Europe in top leagues. They have their own office in uh, Germany, in Dusseldorf. The Federation has an <laughs> office in Europe. And so a lot happened in Asia over the last 10, 15 years. And so I want to see especially that they enjoy themselves, show personality. Yes, we want to get a good result. Yes, we want to try to beat Wales. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and. Uh, and I'm sure that Rob has the same kind of approach, saying build up confidence towards, you know, get the qualifiers on the right track and, and make it happen. It's, we're in very similar shoes. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it and good luck on Thursday. Yeah, likewise. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me.